Hello and welcome to this video on high factor loadings but bad model fit in CFA, what to do. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical analyses such as structural equation models, factor models, multi-level models and latent class models. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter as well as courses that I teach for Quantfish. In this video, I want to address an issue that confuses many people when they run a confirmatory factor analysis or a structural equation model. And that is, sometimes we find models that have strong factor loadings where it looks like we have good indicators that are highly correlated with their underlying factors and all the factor loadings are very satisfactory in terms of their magnitude however the model doesn't fit and then people are confused because they think well this looks so good we have strong factor loadings those are all reliable valid measures of the factors but my model doesn't fit so how is this possible and so i want to shed more light on this issue here in this video based on an example you can see here i have a single factor model with four indicators and you can see the standardized factor loadings depicted in this M plus path diagram that I generated when um, or that M plus generated when the single factor model was fit to my data and you can see that those standardized factor loadings that are depicted here are all highly satisfactory or most of them anyway would we would say are strong factor loadings especially for the first two indicators y1 and y2 the loadings are around 0.9 which is very strong so that would indicate um, about 80 percent explained variance by the factor remember that standardized factor loading squared in simple structure models like this one indicate r squared or the reliability of the indicator so when we square 0.9 then we obtain 0.81 and so that would then indicate that 81 percent of the variance in these indicators is accounted for by the factor and only about 20 percent of the variance is error variance as you can see here from those standardized residual variances which are around 0.2. The other indicators have loadings that are somewhat smaller 0 0.758, 0 0.704 but they're still in a range where we would say oh yeah this looks like a good solid indicator factor loading for a standardized factor loading so these indicators would still be correlated around 0.7 to 0.76 uh, with the factor f and so we would say okay this looks good however when we take a look at model fit statistics and i'll show you these in the m plus output here then you can see that for this single factor cfa model we obtain a very bad chi-square of 90 0.59 two degrees of freedom which is a very very high ratio of chi-square value to degrees of freedom and of course this chi-square value of 90 and two degrees of freedom is highly statistically significant indicating that this model has to be rejected you can see the p-value is very small indicating that the null hypothesis of exact model fit has to be rejected. Now, even if you're not a fan of the chi-square and you think that this test is maybe too restrictive or is too sensitive to misspecifications, here if you took a look at alternative approximate fit statistics like the RMSEA, you also wouldn't be very happy with the model fit. You can see the RMSEA here is 0.347, which is beyond any reasonable cutoff for an RMSEA. So typically we would like to see this to be close to zero, smaller than 0.05, and here it's clearly a lot larger than 0.05 and also the confidence interval here is far away from that lower threshold of 0.05. Same for CFI TLI which also are low. The CFI is still relatively good looking but the TLI is 
0.726, which isn't good. We would typically like to see values that are close to one for these indices, larger than 0.95 typically would be seen as adequate. The SRMR looks relatively good, but also is slightly larger than a commonly recommended threshold of 0.05. So in summary, this model doesn't fit. And so then we might be confused given that the standardized factor loadings looked so strong. So how is this possible? Why so say, can this happen? Shouldn't the chi-square test also be good if we get such strong factor loadings indicating that the indicators are all good measures of this single factor? And so the short answer is no. We shouldn't be surprised at all because model fit does not directly have anything to do with the way the parameter estimates turn out. And the reason for this is that with the test of model fit, we're looking strictly at whether our model reproduces the observed covariance structure and or mean structure, if we include a mean structure, adequately. In this case, only the covariance structure is relevant because the mean structure in this model is saturated. But so this is an indication that the covariance structure is not appropriately um, reproduced. And so still in a model, you could have strong factor loading. Specifically, in this case, when we take a look at our covariance structure and specifically the correlation structure, we can see that all the indicators are fairly strongly correlated. And so this then leads to strong factor loadings in a single factor model because all the items, all the four indicators have a lot in common with each other. The smallest correlation here is 0.59 between observed variables. So therefore, a single factor can account for a lot of variance in all the indicators leading to strong factor loading. So the factor basically absorbs all of that shared variance. However, you can also see here in this correlation matrix that there's a certain inhomogeneity in the correlation pattern such that y1 and y2 and y3 and y4 are more strongly correlated, 0.83 and 0.73 respectively, as opposed to the correlations between uh, y1 and y3, y1 and y4, y2 and y3, and y2 and y4. These correlations here in the middle are substantially lower. They range only between 0.59 and 0.668. And so that's a lower correlation. Those are lower correlations than the ones that we find here. And the reason for this is that here actually a two-dimensional model, a two-factor model was the data generating model, not a single factor model. So the single factor model is misspecified for these data. There is one factor for y1 and y2, and there's one factor for y3 and y4. And those two factors are correlated, obviously, because between factors, there are strong correlations between the indicators, but that would be reflected in a covariance or correlation between the factors, and it cannot be appropriately depicted in a single factor model because those correlation, this correlation structure here is inhomogeneous. It's not an across the board equal correlation between those or close to equal correlation between those four indicators, but there's clear differences. And so therefore, a single factor model cannot account for those correlations fully. There, are, there will be residual associations between y1 and y2 and or y3 and y4 after we account for a single factor. So we need to have a two-factor solution here. That's the data generating structure and not a single factor model. And yet a single factor model will still result in strong factor loadings because there are strong correlations also between those factors. And the way that the single factor model accounts for that is by estimating strong loadings. And so then this explains the discrepancy between the standardized factor loadings looking good and the fit statistics looking so bad because simply the 
structure of the data is not well reproduced by a single factor model and that's what the chi-square test of model fit and the model fit statistics reflect so to say is that lack of fit of that observed structure despite the fact that the factor loadings can be high due to strong correlations in the data. Also these strong correlations are a reason why the CFI index still looks relatively good with a value above 0.9 because this index, the CFI, compares the target model, in this case the single factor model, to a null model where we assume no correlations between the factors and you can see that the baseline model or null model chi-square is even worse, much worse, with a score of 977 and 6 degrees of freedom. That's still much a much less favorable chi-square than the one that we obtain for our one-factor model, which is bad, but it's not as bad as this one, and therefore the CFI still looks relatively decent because our one-factor model still does a somewhat better job of accounting for this correlation pattern here than a null model, which would assume that these are all zero, which they clearly aren't. None of these are close to zero. So let's take a look at a two-factor model also, which I fit to these data also in M plus and let's first of all take a look at model fit you can see that a two-factor model has a very decent fit so estimating another factor and the covariance between the two factors leads to a much much better fit you can see that here now we have a chi-square value of 0.1311 one degree of freedom so that's an extremely low chi-square and the p-value is not significant, indicating that the two-factor model does not have to be rejected. Also then the RMSEA is zero, indicating the fact that, or reflecting the fact that the chi-square value here is smaller than its degrees of freedom, and then whenever that's the case, the RMSEA will go to zero, indicating a good fit also. CFI and TLI are now 1.0, so also indicating very good fit, and the SRMR value is very close to zero. So this model clearly fits well, and it's no wonder because that's the data generating model. So let's take a look at the standardized factor loadings for this model also, which in M plus you find under STD YX standardization. You can see these are all high and they're more homogeneous now. Previously we saw that Y1 and Y2 had stronger loadings than Y3 and Y4 on the single factor. And that reflected the fact in part that the single factor model was misspecified. Yet we may have overlooked this because they all still look good and you could say, well, a loading, standardized loading of 0.7 is still fairly strong. These just simply have more measurement error or maybe there's some more specific variance in these. And so, so you may not have found this to be too concerning that the, the loadings of Y3 and Y4 on the single factor were somewhat lower than the loadings of Y1 and Y2. However, this was a symptom of the problem with the single factor model because that reflected the fact that really there are two factors. And so this is a model that makes more sense and then also those loadings now are more homogeneous. They're all above 0.8. You can see too from the standardized solution that the two factors F2 and F1 are very highly correlated, 0.8, so those must be strongly related constructs. For example, maybe F1 is depression, F2 is anxiety, and then at the latent level we often see correlations above or around 0 0.7, 0 0.8 for constructs like that that are so commonly seen together when people are or people who are anxious often also experience depression and so it's no uh, it's not rare for those to be correlated so highly so it's not unrealistic to find a two-factor model with strongly correlated factors if you look at constructs that are strongly related in theory and so this correlation although it's very high very strong 0.8 it's not equal to 1.0 right so it's different from a perfect correlation and that's the reason why a single factor model did not fit because this correlation isn't one it's significantly different from one it is high but it's not one and therefore we need two factors rather than just 
a single factor as shown by the FIT indices. So in summary, the fact that you find strong standardized factor loadings does not mean your model has to be a correct model or has to fit well. And it is really actually not a surprise or not totally untypical to find a model with strong factor loadings that shows a poor fit. So in other words, strong factor loadings are not a guarantee that your model is the correct model or that it should also fit. Those are different issues. And so therefore, you should first of all pay attention to your fit statistics. Look at the chi-square and look at whether this model fits. And then if it doesn't fit, you should not interpret the parameter estimates because they may be biased. So for example, in this example, the parameter estimates from the single factor model were clearly biased. So those factor loadings for Y3 and Y4 were biased. And then also their reliabilities, their R squared values would have been underestimates because the single factor model didn't really fit those data. So make sure you find an adequate model fit first or you find a model that shows an adequate model fit first before you interpret the parameter estimates because an ill-fitting model, a poorly fitting model may lead to biased parameter estimates that should not be interpreted. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about factor loadings and CFA and SEM and model fit. If you did, please subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, Leave a comment in the comment section if you like and don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next time.